Welcome back to Ask a Black Belt. We received a question on how many years did it take to get your black belt? Or how long does it take to get a black belt? Now, this is a question that's different for every single person, right? Everyone's jujitsu journey uh, has a lot of different uh, roads and different ways to get to the same goal, which is for many people to earn a black belt, right? Um, I've heard many times, and when people ask this question, I say average 10 years, right? I don't know where I heard that number, but people want to know a number, and so I think that tends to be the general consensus that if you are somewhat consistent, um, three days a week, four days a week, that uh, earning a black belt in 10 years is average. Now, myself, it took me a about eight and a half years. And I'd like to kind of share my uh, journey to black belt. So I started jujitsu in 2003, uh, soon after I graduated high school, um, and I was going to junior college playing baseball during the, f uh, during, during the fall of 2003. I was going to the gym in Antioch, California. I think it was called Extreme Fitness at the time. And while I was there, uh, Nick Diaz, he was coaching some Nogi Jiu-Jitsu classes in the back room where they had some mat areas. And he was going around the gym and trying to encourage some people to, uh, to try the Jiu-Jitsu class. And I was, I believe I was 17 or 18 at the time and it sounded intriguing so I gave it a try and at the time uh, uh, This was before Nick Diaz was UFC um, he was with uh, Caesar Gracie and Pleasant Hill and he was teaching there as a gig uh, And because I'm sure he loved to do it and he was a purple belt He was fighting and I think like extreme cage fighting or one of the lower ranks and I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the workout aspect of it. I've been an athlete all my life playing baseball, football, soccer. Um, and it was very new to me to practice a, a individual sport instead of a team sport, which I was normally used to. And, um, you know, the more I started training with him a couple of days a week, two, two days a week, three days a week, he would encourage me to go out to the Pleasant Hill location for Caesar Gracie and he was encouraging me to do MMA. So I thought I was gonna be an MMA fighter, right? Um, sounded fun. I enjoyed boxing. I did some amateur boxing in the past, um, I think when I was around 17 years old. And um, 17 or 18 years old. And the more I went to go train with, with Nick Diaz and with the team and Caesar Gracie's in Pleasant Hill, uh, the more I realized that jujitsu was so different and I think the day that really sparked the interest in jujitsu was I was rolling with an orange belt. Um, the kid was probably 14 years old, 13 years old, uh, much lighter than me, much weaker than I am physically. And he just tapped me out like three or four times in a five minute round. And I just had no answer for him. He was crawling all over me, taking my back, choking me. And um, it just blew my mind. And then the more I spoke with some of my uh, colleagues, my boxing coach, he said, hey, if you wanna be an MMA fighter, stick with Nick Diaz in the Caesar Gracie group. But if you wanna learn just some, just jujitsu, traditional jujitsu, then you should go train with Ricardo Barros in Antioch at the Half Gracie. Now Half Gracie used to have a location in downtown Antioch, um, right next to the water on the Delta. So I went to there to go check it out. Um, Kurt Osiander was covering the kids class when I showed up, this guy, long hair, tattooed. And he said, oh, Ricardo's not here today. Come back the next day. And so I remember coming back and actually a friend of mine was also training there. Um, and so we went together and man, I fell in love. Back, back in that time, uh, it used to be 45 minute warm ups, right? We used to do 45 minutes of just uh, intense calisthenics, partner drills, running, sprinting, squats, abdominals, 
Um, it was extreme. And that's what I liked about it at that age because I was just, it was a new type of workout. And then we would do technique and drills for about 30 minutes or so. Very, very fundamental, very basic. And then we would roll for 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and so the classes back then were around two hours of just uh, the crazy intense workout in the beginning, like 30 minutes minimum. An hour would be a, a long one. So I say 45 minutes on average. Technique was very, um, you know, we didn't spend too much time on technique, maybe 30 minutes, and then we would do uh, specific sparring and, and just rolling rounds, over, you know, for 45 minutes to an hour. And so it was an extreme workout. I loved it. I fell in love. I stayed with Ricardo. Um, I mean, I probably was with, with, with Nick Diaz and Cesar Gracie for a few months, three months or so. And then with Ricardo, I was training very often. I mean, at least like four or five tight, four or five classes per week, at least. And um, a little over a year, I got my blue belt. And this was the time I, I, I stopped playing baseball in college. I had no interest in that anymore. I was really falling in love with, with jujitsu. But after, soon after I got my blue belt, I um, actually moved down to San Diego. I decided to uh, stop going to college. Um, I was kind of on track to um, to do med medical school because that's what I thought I wanted to do. But then um, when my transfer agreement came in for UC, uh, UC Davis, I decided not to sign it, not to go, and instead go live by the beach for uh, X, X amount of time. So I moved down to San Diego. And for about six months, I probably trained like twice or three times a month. I didn't train that often. Um, I went and visited schools like Rodrigo Madero's and Fabio Santos. Uh, I made a friend who was a, pro, a brown belt at Fabio Santos. We, um, and then what was really cool at Rodrigo Madero school was that every time that I went there, um, I very often I got to train with Clark Gracie and he was a purple belt at the time. I mean, this guy, it, he, he, every time I went there, I think they sent him after me, he just beat the crap out of me. And he was a purple belt, his purple belt was all beat up and torn up. And, and it was, I mean, to me, he felt like a black belt and I was just like uh, blown away. Um, and that was kind of cool because I saw him around the beach riding his cruiser and then he, you know, he would say what's up. But, uh, you know, I spent most of my time working, partying, and then every once in a while I would train. Um, and then after six months when I moved back to the Bay Area, I got really serious with jiu-jitsu. Um, and then soon after that, my, my professor, Ricardo Barros, uh, he opened up his own gym in Brentwood, California helped him, uh, you know, a little bit to get that space going uh, as far as like helping him put mats down and painting and, and things like that. And then, and then at that point I started co coaching the kids classes. Uh, I think, you know, I would, we made a trade where I helped with the kids classes and, um, and I was training every single day. And I think from that point on, from like 2006 all the way to 2011, I was just, training every day, maybe Sundays off, twice a day, three times a day. Um, I got my purple belt maybe sometime in 2007. So I think I was a blue belt for a total of about two years. I was a purple belt for one year. And then I was a brown belt for almost three years, two and a half years. And then I got promoted at the end of um, 2011 and to black belt and at that time uh, I think when I was when I earned my brown belt coach Ricardo Barros opened up a, a another gym in Brentwood a larger space so we moved to there and he's still there to this day I think he's been in business now for about 15 years um, and having a lot of success and um, Soon after I earned my black belt, I would say about a year or so afterwards, I decided I want to go back to, to university to finish my degree. I got a degree in kinesiology with an emphasis in sports management, and I felt that that would help me in my career as potentially opening up my own school. Um, and while I was at San Jose State, I started studying uh, judo, so I thought I would learn a new aspect of uh, martial arts that could help complement my jiu-jitsu game. Um, and then that, you know, I trained there while well, the three years I was at the university and then took about a year off and came back to train with coach, uh, David Williams for about uh, a year, about two years, um, after, 
So I think in, all in total, about five years total with consistency about three days a week uh, to earn my black belt in judo. And he, Professor, or, I'm sorry, Sensei David Williams really had an emphasis on competition in order to level up to black belt in judo. So, um, so we competed a lot, and traveled to compete, um, and, and, and that really helped me get in shape. And, and he helped me a lot in the competition aspects on his mindset and how to prepare and get ready for a competition physically and mentally. And then after, after I got my black belt in judo, I, I came back to coaching jiu-jitsu on, on a regular basis and training jiu-jitsu. Um, to, it was really difficult because I, I would say I, those three years I was in university, I trained judo often, but I didn't train jiu-jitsu very often, maybe like once every other month. And so after I, um, you know, after I came back from, uh, from judo and, and graduating, I, I started coaching at a, at a few different gyms and, and I started training regularly again. And I would say, you know, the first three months was really tough as a black belt to come in and you know you have this belt around your waist but you're rusty and so you know purple belts giving you a hard time getting tapped out by lower belts and it was definitely a humbling experience um but I was, luckily i was in a good space i was at coaching and, and training at smash gyms running the kids program coaching adults at three of their locations i did that for a few years ran my own program and um in redwood city and then covid hit training in the garages and uh, training with friends and at friends' gyms, and then and then taking over the head instructor job at uh, San Jose State and um, and at UFC gym. So I've been at San Jose State. This is going to be my third semester, spring 2023. I was at the UFC gym for a little over a year, and then finally things kind of worked out to where I was able to open up my own gym here in Sunnyvale. So all in all, I've been training since 2003 in the fall. Uh, now it's 2020, 23. So I think this fall I'll be training for 20 years, um, uh, jujitsu. And um, so my coach always said, you know, we obviously when you're a white belt, blue belt, you have that end goal to become a black belt, and you you want to know how long does it take on average? Okay, so 10 years, right? But my professor always said, once you get your black belt, it's like starting all over again. It's a brand new white belt. And that's what it is because now I'm a, now that you're a black belt, you don't have any other belts to look forward to. So what goals do you have now as a black belt? Well, if you're a blue belt, your goal is to get a purple belt. And if you're a purple belt, your goal is to get a brown belt. You have these uh, attainable, uh, somewhat short-term goals within your jiu-jitsu practicing, uh, practicing, but you have to find, um, once you get a black belt, now what am I doing it for? And what motiv what motivates me to train every day um, now that it's not about the belt? Because uh, once you're a black belt, you're gonna be a black belt for at least 30 plus years, as long as you stay current and you have the potential, I think it's 36 years or something, after you get your black belt, you can get a coral belt. So there's, a long time until that. So um, I think one of the questions that somebody asked at the Ask, Ask a Black Belt seminar um, was how do you stay motivated with Jiu Jitsu or how do you not get bored with Jiu Jitsu? Um, and I think that really comes into place as a Black Belt because um, what motivates us to keep training every single day and, and um, to help us be consistent. And I'm gonna make another video on that um, on how to stay consistent, how to stay motivated uh, in while practicing in jiu-jitsu and what's helped me. So um, I hope my understanding my jiu-jitsu uh, progression from white belt to black belt um, and made me help you to give an idea, right? Everyone's a little different. Like once I became a blue belt, when I came back from San Diego, I was training every single day. As a blue belt, I was coaching kids classes, helping assist. Purple belt, I started taking over kids' classes. Brown belt, I was coaching, I was running the kids' program, coaching all the fundamentals classes. So, I mean, I was, it was a job for me. It was a part-time job because I had another job as well, but from a blue belt all the way until today, so from 2006 until today, I've been coaching jiu-jitsu and, and, and doing it as a profession. Um, and so it, I, really, I really made jiu-jitsu a huge part of my life uh, at, an early, at an early stage. 
So, you know, maybe my progression is somewhat faster than others because uh, of my commitment. Um, but for me, eight and a half years, average 10. For you, maybe faster, maybe longer. I don't know. See you next time at um, Ask a Black Girl.